Coal trains lead to Yankee Stadium in the Bronx as the Red Sox are back in New York again. Fans make their way in for game one of a three-game series between the Red Sox and the Yankees. Welcome inside the broadcast with everybody. I'm Don Orsillo along with Hall of Famer Dennis Eckersley. Welcome to Red Sox baseball. Well, tonight we see the return of Brandon Workman fresh off his suspension. It has been a long time for Brandon Workman. I can't believe it's been almost two weeks. You know, the punishment that he got was very costly, not only for him, but the Red Sox. You know, but he deserves to have this start. In the five starts before this, he's pitched so well. This last time against Cleveland, remember that wrong, long rain delay against Baltimore where he threw a one-hitter in that one nothing game. So he deserves to get this start. He's done everything that the Red Sox could ask of him. We talk about postseason, what he did out of the bullpen. This kid has earned his spot in this rotation. Now you take a look at the numbers for him coming into this outing in five starts. 1-0 and with a 3.21 earned run average. 21 Ks to 11 walks. Well, the Red Sox have a lot of starters. That's a problem right now. We'll see what the Red Sox do. This much we know, the Red Sox have set their rotation up against the Cubs. Well, the good thing was is that uh, Buckholz came back and had a good start. And now you're saying we almost have too many starters. Who's the last guy out? The guy out is uh, really uh, Dubrunt. And uh, he's going to have to work his way back in. And then how about Ruby De La Rosa, the way he's pitched? You know, the guy it's on the bubble right now is Jake Peavy. You know, he's going to get the start on Monday, but that's a short leash going forward because there's a lot of guys deserving that are in the bullpen right now. Then going forward, we're not sure rotation to rotation who's going to be in it. With more on the rotation, here's Gary Streisky. Guys, just like you mentioned, Brandon Workman making his first start since serving that six-game suspension and then that starting rotation still pretty stacked with all those guys, Ruby De La Rosa, Jake Peavy, like you mentioned, who's starting in place of Felix Dubron, who John Farrell mentioned a couple days ago go could have potentially started against the Cubs not anymore it is Jake Peavy despite Felix Dubron still considering himself a starter whether it's going to be here at the Red Sox or another team he'll be the first to tell you that as John Farrell explains in the Geico of the day his initial reaction suggests that he, he does view himself as a starter uh, but as it was explained to him that that's where our need currently is in the bullpen for him uh, and as well as other guys in our rotation that are ahead of him. Uh, so there's a way to get back in the rotation. Let's put your way back into it. And you mentioned the Red Sox going to have to make a move pretty soon here in terms of distinguishing who's going to remain in that starting rotation because John Farrell was also explaining earlier today, currently on the roster, they're holding 12 position players. Best case scenario, he would like to carry 13 guys, so you got to think a move might be in imminent to get that 13 players back on the roster. All right, Gary, thanks very much. Well, Mike Napoli has got to go in this season for the Red Sox. It's certainly against the Yankees. Two home runs against New York this year with a 308 average. Napoli and the Red Sox ready to go. We come back to the Bronx. First pitch is next.
Southwest Airlines, Audi dealers of New England, Dunkin' Donuts, Toyota's website for deals via Toyota.com, by PaulRedeen.com, Celebrity Golf Instruction, and much more. Your New England Subaru dealers deliver us from evil in theaters July 2nd. And by Kia. We welcome you back to Yankee Stadium as the Red Sox and Yankees renew acquaintances once again as the Yankees have taken the field tonight. So let's check out the visiting Red Sox starting nine. Red Sox lineup brought to you by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Brock Holt leading it off in right field with Dustin Pedroia at second base in the two spot with Big Poppy David Ortiz, the DH. Mike Napoli at first base in the cleanup spot with Johnny Gomes in left field. A.J. Brzezinski does the catching, batting six with Xander Bogart still batting seventh, third straight game. He's at third base with Stephen Drew at shortstop and Jackie Bradley Jr. rounds out the starting nine and hitting a 292 in his last seven games as he's back in center field. Now tonight's Yankee starting pitcher is presented by New England Nissan dealers. Vidal Nuno is on the mound tonight for New York. 13th start of the year for Nuno. One and four with a 5.88 earn run average. 50 strikeouts to 22 walks. And opponents hitting at 287 against him. His last start, a rough one again. Six and a third, six hits, five runs, four earned against the Baltimore Orioles. Let's check out the defense for the Yankees in behind him. It's Kelly Johnson at third base, Derek Jeter at short, Brian Roberts at second, and Mark Teixeira at first. Left to right of the outfield, Brett Gardner, Jacoby Ellsbury, and Ichiro Suzuki. As tonight, Brian McCann does the catching for Nuno. Yankees are ninth in the American League in fielding percentage. Now the crew chief Mike Winters has a plate tonight calling the balls and strikes with Andy Fletcher at first base, Mark Wagner at second base, and Chris Siegel is the umpire at third. Very nice night here in New York and a very nice day in New York for that matter. Nothing but blue skies above and 76 degrees as we get it started. Breeze out to left at 8 miles per hour. And the forecast is for clear the remainder of the evening. Red Sox are in their alternate road blue jerseys tonight. Yankees in the home white pinstripes. And here we go. Red Sox and Yankees from New York. Red Sox wrapping up a lengthy road trip that began in Oakland and then on to Seattle. Off day yesterday, and now they begin this series against the Yankees. Nuno's first pitch of the ball game is going to miss for ball one, and we're underway. Now Nuno is a guy that you should hit. I mean, this is a guy in the rotation. They they they're decimated this rotation. You know that Sabathia has been out, Panetta's out, Nova is out. So he's started the so many starts that he wouldn't have never gotten if it didn't happen. But uh, his last two starts, giving up five home runs. I mean, this is a guy that you got to get. We have said that more than once on this road trip, and the Red Sox have been unable to do it. They're trying to do it tonight. And really, the reason the Nuno is out there, as you mentioned, by necessity. They really don't have anybody else as far as the depth chart goes. So here he is again, and Red Sox trying to take advantage of what has been a tough year for him. You know, they go to Oakland, they get Kashmir to open up that series. They lose that game. They go to Seattle, they get uh, King Felix, and they lose that game. So this is a big game, this series against the Yankees. They got to try to catch up. They're five games behind the Yankees. 
A good start as Holt heads down to first base on the walk. Are you a Red Sox fan looking for creative ways to fundraise for your nonprofit organization? Contact our group sales department to learn about this summer fundraising packages. Go to RedSox.com slash groups for more details. Lead off walk for Holt and here is Dustin Pedroia. We'll take ball one. Eight for 28 on the trip. Hitting at 265, four homers and 27 runs batted in. There's a strike. Tonight's key matchup is brought to you by Honda. Start something special with a great deal on a Honda. Pedroia hitting at 302 with eight homers, 54 RBIs, and 114 career games against the Red Sox rival. Over the short lead at first as Pedroia is swinging away and he fouls it off to the right. You're thinking about this Yankee starting rotation. Where would they be without Tanaka? You think about oh. the kind of year he's had. He's made the difference. I mean, kept them right there. They're three games out. And really, they haven't played much better than the Red Sox. Barely. I mean, they're almost identical. Red Sox have much better pitching. And going forward, do the Yankees make a move? I mean, I'd have to say yes based on their track record in the past. And there is strike three. Pedroia doesn't like it, but it does appear to pick up the corner. Totally catches Pedroia by surprise. I don't know what he's looking for. He gets a fastball, and he can't believe he throws him a fastball, and that's in his happy zone up and in, and he takes it. One down, Brock Holt at first base, and here's Big Poppy. 256, 18 homers, and 49 runs batted in. Set safely in nine of his last 11 games. As the Yankees shifting, but in the infield with the possibility of a double play with Brock Holt at first base. And Ortiz dancing out of the way. Yeah, you take into account for New York that they're without CC Sabathia, Michael Pineda, and Yvonne Nova. I mean, that's a huge chunk of their rotation. I'm talking three of the five missing. But yet they are in the mix. Yankees three games back at the Blue Jays to start tonight's action. Now you think about the Yankees, they really haven't got, you know, the chips to, to trade anybody to get the big big name like Price, not that you're going to get him or Samarja with the, the Cubs. I mean, you, it takes a lot to get the, those guys, and they haven't got it to give. Ortiz will pop it up right side as Brian Roberts dances over to make the catch back of the bag at second and on the infield dirt two down. So Ortiz retired that'll bring up Mike Napoli. Napoli at 278 nine homers and 30 runs batted in. Multiple hits in three straight games for Napoli. Homered in consecutive games on Sunday and Monday. It's part of this road trip for the Red Sox. Wraps up on Sunday. As he takes strike one. Stun down for Lowe's, never stop improving. Mike Napoli in 18 games in May hit 186 with no home runs and a 237 slugging percentage in June. 323 with four home runs and a slugging percentage of 548. That's here with two down and Brock Holt at first base. Toss over and hold back to the bag. You see early on we've seen a lot of high fastballs from Nuno's. He's been lucky to not get anybody to smoke it. The one by Pedroia was right there. He said he let off a fastball there with Napoli. And 0 1. And that one's by him. 91 miles an hour, but Napoli late 0 2. Seen mostly fastballs, but 91 is much. He's trying to throw this ball inside, opposite location, beats him. Napoli fights it off foul to the right. Well, watch Sox at two every game day at midnight, presented by Kiel Vodka. Stay balanced. Sox batting in the top of the first inning. Brock Holt will lead off walk, but he's still at first base with two down in the inning. 
Soft toss over and Holt back to the bag. Napoli not chasing one and two. See Napoli up there with two strikes. He does choke up. He's hit the ball the other way. That's why he's hitting over 300. He's kind of quietly hitting over 300 this past month. First ever appearance for Vidal Nuno against the Red Sox. He's yet to win a game at Yankee Stadium. Only got one win on the year. He comes in at one and four with that 5.88 earned run average. 2 2. And it's fouled back. Fans, there are still 81 games left in the Red Sox season. Make sure you know what channel to watch by downloading the 2014 Red Sox season schedule. Visit Nesson.com slash schedule now. Holt at first, two down here in the first inning. Napoli takes strike three. The Red Sox lead Holt at first. The Yankees are coming up from the stadium. First, the Yankees before the game here, as uh, right before the national anthem, paid homage to Jack Lancelotti, of course, uh, the Red Sox employee who passed tragically last week in a moment of silence here at Yankee Stadium for Jack Lancelotti. It is on to the bottom of the first inning. And Brett Gardner leads it off here against Brandon Workman here in the bottom of the first. And it's ball one to Gardner. Red Sox starting pitcher presented by New England Audi dealers. Experience the all new 2015 Audi A3 today. All right, the parents sixth start for Workman. It's been a while. A 2.88 earn run average coming in. Last worked against the Cleveland Indians, and that was back on the 15th of June. When you think about it, Don, he's been sitting on that suspension since he pitched against Tampa back the 30th of May. So, and he started three times knowing that sooner or later he's going to get suspended. 
Went through the appeal process and did not win at his okay. side yeah. toll to Major League Baseball. And they did not uh, downsize the suspension at all. Well, we knew he was going to get suspended. I mean, he sticks up for Ortiz in that game against uh, through behind Longoria, Longoria. Yeah. and you knew it was going to happen. But meanwhile, it took so long for them to, you know, the appeal to take place, and it cost him. I mean, it cost him. Hopefully, he'll be sharp tonight. But it's pretty difficult to do. There's a pop up down the left field line, head towards foul ground and into the seats. But you know how much that Farrell likes him. You can tell by the way he talks about him how much he likes this kid. And you knew he was going to stay in the rotation. I mean, as far as everything else is concerned, I mean, we'll talk about We got all night to talk about this rotation. <laughs> There's lots to talk about. Yes. And John Farrell had a lot to say about it today. And something changed uh, because Felix DuBron was going to pitch. Right. In the series against uh, uh, the Cubs. Well, Ruby, no, Ruby Del Rosa right. was going to start in that series against the Cubs. That's not going to happen. No, and, uh, the way it's set up now. And I think that was kind of, as you see, a punch out. He beats some fastball away. He's got some gas tonight. Let's check out the Yankees starting nine tonight. That's Brett Gardner. He's in left field to be followed by the captain, Derek Jeter, in his final season. Jacoby Ellsbury in center field, batting third in this Yankees order with Mark Teixeira. First base, Carlos Beltran is the DH with Brian McCann doing the catching. Brian Roberts at second base. Ichiro is in right, and Kelly Johnson at third base bats ninth. One out here in the first inning, Yankee Stadium. Expecting a sellout here tonight against the Red Sox in game one. Jeter does what he normally does. Takes it the other way into right field for a base hit. Have a Pat and Jeter swing right there. Let's check out the Red Sox defensively brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Xander Bogarts at third base with Stephen Drew at short. Dustin Pedroia at second base. Mike Napoli at first. Left to right in the outfield. Johnny Gomes, Jackie Bradley Jr. and Brock Holt. As A.J. Brzezinski does the catching tonight for Workman. Red Sox seventh in the American League in fielding percentage. One out, one on. And Jacoby Ellsbury, the batter. A 2.86 first season in a Yankees uniform for Ellsbury. Four homers and 33 runs batted in. And on the grass at third is Bogarts. Let's take a look at our Chevy key player, Jacoby Ellsbury, hitting at 322, six stolen bases, and 11 runs scored in the month of June. One out, one on here for Ellsbury in the bottom of the first inning. Jeter held on by Napoli at first. On the ground and a fair ball. Kicks off the box, seats to the right field corner as Jeter heads for third to be stopped there. It is a double for Ellsbury, and it's second and third with one down. Workman throwing a high fastball, and Ellsbury does some work on this. This ball up and in, up middle, and he just smokes this ball down the line. Napoli doesn't have much time to react to it. Just fair down the right field line. You see it bounce around down there. Ball by him. You know, Jeter's going to get the third. Ellsbury cruises to second base. Second and third, one down. And it brings up Mark Teixeira. A lot of fastballs from Workman early on. He hasn't been out there in a while. Teixeira with three home runs in his last five games. And a two run home run against Toronto on Wednesday night, final game of that series. His 150th home run as a member of the Yankees on Saturday against the Baltimore Orioles. He's already visited the DL this season. Right hamstring strain. Missed 14 total games. This is in the air to left, and Johnny Gomes moving back will make the catch. Tagging is Jeter. He's coming playward, and he will score. Yankees take a one nothing lead. Sack fly for Mark Teixeira. A nice piece of hitting by Teixeira. You think about the pitch that he hit that he got in the air. Wasn't trying to pull, just trying to get the ball in the air. Does a nice job. Ball down and away. He lifts it to, 
to left field. This ball is hit fairly square. Johnny's got no chance to throw out Jeter from third. Ellsbury at second base, a run in. Carlos Beltran, the batter, the DH. Numbers have really not been great for Beltran. He started very well for New York. Let's chop it down to first base. Napoli's got it. He'll tag the bag. Inning over. But the Yankees grab a run, take a one nothing lead after one. On TC with tonight's poll question. What is your favorite New York based song? How about Sox 1, The Empire State of Mind? Sox 2, New York, New York. Sox 3, New York State of Mind. Or Sox 4 on Broadway. Text your answer to 536 536. Message and data rates, those may apply. Text up if you need it. Visit Nesson.com backslash terms for all the legal stuff, guys. I got to go with Jay Z on this one. I'm going New York State of Mind for Billy Joel's at uh, Fenway last night. Going New York, New York. There you go. You're I'm going old school. Oh yeah, I tell you what, because they play it at the end of the game, right? Yes, if, if they win. If they win. I think so. I don't know. I think it's Why, only if they win. Only if they win. Yeah. Although I, you don't like to hear that, but uh, now Johnny Gomes leading it off here for the Red Sox. Gomes, Brzezinski, and Bogarts. I don't know why my memory was pitching a game against Gidry. I beat him. Which is, you know, it's hard to beat Gidry to begin with. I think I thought I went nine or something, and they played that song, and I they got like, yeah. Maybe they do it both. Home and, and I'm told they do do it. Thank you. Yes, win or loss. <laughs> In the air to left field, Johnny Gomes got himself a base hit. For a Brett Gardner out there, first base hit for the Red Sox tonight. As Nuno gives up the hit to begin the second inning. Johnny Gomes hitting over 300 against left handers this year. So lead runner on in the first two innings for the Red Sox. A walk for Holt, a single for Gomes here in the second. AJ Przinsky, the batter. 254, four homers, 31 runs batted in. Przinsky, hey. three for 22 in the trip. It has not been a good trip. He's not the, the lone ranger. There's been a lot of guys. No, he's not, not alone in that category. No, he is not. Xander Bogarts waiting on deck. From an offensive standpoint, there are not many that have really had a great road trip. We've seen Jackie Bradley Jr. come around the last couple of days, actually. Well, you think about it, when you only won two games on the road trip, yes. I mean, you think about Ortiz, the home run he hit in the extra innings in Oakland, then he hit a home run in Seattle, the game that they won. 
So when Ortiz does good, we do good. That's about it. Brzezinski taking it low and jumps ahead here, two and one. Two for 11 in the series against the Mariners, as I mentioned, three for 22 for the entire trip. Takes the 2 1, and it's a little bit low. This guy's pretty proud of his cheese, isn't he? I mean, he's throwing a lot of fastballs for throwing 89. I was going to say, for a guy who doesn't have much cheese, right. he's proud of his cheese. My goodness. And a swing and a miss, full count. That pitch was down. Little cutter three and one. I haven't seen this. AJ gets fooled down and away. Looking way out front. Looking fastball. You don't get too many hitters fastballs in hitters counts anymore. This is the big leagues. Well, fans, you can test your Red Sox IQ. Did you catch last weekend's episode of Charlie Moore Outdoors with New Hampshire native Sam Fold? If not, there's nothing to worry about. An encore presentation is on tonight following Nesson Sports Today. I like that. Eck on the fly. Started with one <laughs> promo, ended with another. Very I nice. Nicely done. 3 2 pitch. It has popped up foul back and out of play. That two in front of me. <laughs> Jay Pruszynski batting here, battling up against Nuno with a runner at first, nobody out. Fouled off to the left, out of play. Fastball, little cutter, I guess, a little slider. We've seen a one curveball. Pitch of the bat here for Pierzynski. Gomes goes and Pierzynski flies to right field right at Ichiro, who will make the catch and fire back in, but he will not get it there in time. Pierzynski retired. Gomes gets back to the bag at first. He was on the move with a full count there. It looked like Pierzynski was right on this. I thought he stung it more than he did. But you see Gomes on the run. We don't run that much to begin with, trying to stay out of the double play. Luckily, he has enough time to get back, but you know, we don't run at all. I mean, you know, Pruszynski can't run. You're trying to stay out of a double play. He almost got a double play if, if each year would have thrown a bullet back behind him. One on, one out. Xander Bogarts back into the first pitch, follows it back. Fastball that was right down the middle. Hello, that ball is right there. Good swing. Bogarts two for 25 on the road trip for the Red Sox. One for 12 in the series in Seattle. Line foul back into the seats. Tonight's suits are designed by Joseph Abood, custom made in the USA from fine Italian fabrics, now available at Men's Warehouse. Stephen Drew waiting on deck. One out, one on. The Boston second inning. And Snap throw to first base. Gomes back to the bag. He's not going anywhere. Just hit Bogarts, able to jump back out of the way. Average down to 256 coming into tonight's game. And a swing and a miss. Nuno strikes him out. That's the third strikeout for Nuno. Two what down. Is, what is this? I mean, we've seen the best of Nuno tonight. Here's this hook. He's only thrown a couple of these all night. He picks a good time for it. Down and in. Gets him out front. I mean, that's pretty nasty right there. What is this? This guy's given up 15 bombs in 67 innings. Five in his last two starts, he's gotten his lunch, and we're seeing the best of him. And tonight he's figured it out. Yes. 7.09 earned run average at home in New York. 
There is strike one to Stephen Drew, hitting at 122. The homers had a run batted in. Speaking of guys not very hot, one for 11 off of left handed pitchers thus far. Old for 22 on the road trip. And to send one out to short right field on the run as each row can still go get it. Dives into right center field to make the catch. Robs Drew of the Red Sox. It's one nothing Yankees after an inning and a half. All-Star game and get a specially priced ticket to a July Red Sox home game. Then go to RedSox.com slash vote anytime between now and July 3rd. Vote Red Sox and receive the opportunity to purchase a specially priced $20 ticket. The confused couple there. One to nothing. The Yankees have a lead over the Red Sox. As a curveball from Brandon Workman opens up the bottom of the second inning. Can at 223, eight homers, 34 runs batted in. Strike over the inside corner. Like a little cutter right there. This McCann has been a disappointment for them. He's got eight home runs. He's hit hit under 200 against right-handed pitching. It's incredible. He will pop it up, and Workman's acting like he wants it. Now he's going to get out of the way. Napoli comes in, calls him off. Well, fans, you can test your Red Sox IQ right now on the MLB Preplay mobile app. Download free and start predicting every at bat of every Red Sox game all season. Tonight, preplay predicts Brandon Workman will go six and a third innings, allow two earned runs, six hits, a walk, and five Ks. One down in the second inning. And it brings up the former Orioles second baseman, Brian Roberts. This Two games earlier this week, the bruised right knee. But uh, back in there for New York as He's he takes hurt. strike one. Didn't he? He's always hurt. He been hurt, missed a couple of years with Baltimore. Concussions, had a shoulder injury, hamstring problem. Signed the Yankees as a free agent, one year contract in January this past offseason. Short money, they not really that risky to give him a couple beans. Down the left field line. And foul. Really in his prime, he's a doubles machine. 50, Doris. right? Yes. 50 of one year. He could run. He could steal you 50 bags. Back on May 14th, had two triples in a game. 
Fouls it off at the plate, stays alive 0 2. Working with that good curveball. He puts a lot of guys away with that curveball. A little deceptive when you watch Workman. He's a, such a big dude. He almost looks like he muzzles it. You know, it doesn't sling, he muzzles it in there. Kind of a max effort guy? No, 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 not necessarily. I mean, short arm. I mean, he's just muscling it. And that one hits the bat. I think the nub of the bat. And that's pretty hard to do. You throw this ball off the knob. Is this off the knob? No. No, at no. the back. My goodness. I should say. No two pitch. Drops outside. One and two. Working upset with that last delivery. Fastball hook cutter. Don't see a whole lot of change ups from him. Sixth start of the year for Workman is first since June the 15th. And you wonder what uh, that kind of time off from a rust perspective will affect him tonight if at all. You would think I mean you try to stay as sharp as you can but the time is just. It's been so long. You know all juiced up here in Yankee Stadium yeah, his first career start against the Yankees. Oh. High fly ball to right field sending Brock Holt back to the warning track. At the wall, he leaps and makes the catch. Brock what? Holt's got it. You gotta be kidding me. Nicely done. How about that? I tell you, Workman loves that. Gets away with a high breaking ball, some cutter or something. But Brock Holt, look at this guy once again. I have never seen anything like it. A guy that plays so many positions, never been out there. He times it perfectly and snatches this ball over the top of the wall. This ball's gone. Might have hit the top of the fence, but he's there. Nicely done. Does he amaze you or what? It's incredible. It, it goes on and on. Doesn't and on. matter where he plays. Happiness, workman, happiness. Knows he got away with one. Especially with the short porch here in New York. Anything in the air seems like it's got a chance. And that's a can of corn anywhere, but this ball's gone. Might have hit the top of the fence. So two down here in the second inning. Ichiro man's right field. For New York slaps it foul the other way out of play. He's down 0 and 2. Have a son or daughter who want to learn more about baseball or their favorite Red Sox players? Now you can with the all new Nesson Clubhouse.com. Has videos, games, and a whole lot more. It's fun, free, and easy to use. Nesson Clubhouse.com. Two down in the second, four in a row. Retired by a workman who misses inside. You don't even have to make a mistake here to give up a bomb. It's, just, it's frightening. I don't like I don't like this. I didn't like pitching here before, let alone now. I mean, to me, it's much easier than the old Yankee Stadium because right-handed hitters could go out. It's an intro foul ball right at you if you're in the Red Sox dugout. There's the short porch and right, and it seems in this ballpark, the way it's set up, that it does carry better that way too. You remember the first year they were scared yes, because wait a minute everybody's yeah. going bridge it's yes. like wait a minute this right is out center. of control. Just to the right of the Yankees bullpen where most of them were going. And I thought that the structure is creating some sort of wind tunnel that was helping it get out over there in right center. Swing and a miss gets away from Pierzynski briefly he's got to throw him out and does. Second strikeout for Workman one nothing Yankees through two. Brock Holt with a nice catch in right field.
Notice the small adjustment Jackie Bradley Jr. has made in his at-bats coming up right now. What he did was he actually opened up his stance. He was explaining to me earlier in the game that prior to actually the road trip, the West Coast road trip they went on, his feet were shoulder width apart, but they were parallel to each other. And he went back. You can see that front foot there a little bit open. And as the pitcher approaches, he closes that back up. He said... Using the feet parallel was an adjustment he made this season. He went back to what he felt more natural with, and it's actually been paying dividends. He's a 211 hitter on the season, but recently on the road trip, guys, batting 292. So seeing some dividends pay off for sure. Yeah, 375 in his last three games. And a different stance than we have seen throughout the year. And you know, really, the whole thing's come down to almost ran into that, but uh, the whole thing come down to that big swing. He's got a big swing. Maybe it helps. He opens up a little bit. Safely in six of the last seven games on the road trip. Still at 211 with a home run. 24 runs batted in. Strike over the outside corner. That's a gift right there. But Bradley knows they pound him inside. I mean, that's what the secret's been from Jump Street. Fastballs in. It's jammed and grounds it back to Nuno. Nice pick about knee high, and he throws him out. Now, that, uh, tonight's view is going from the Red Sox clubhouse to the Yankees dugout. Now, this dugout is bigger than the old Yankee Stadium dugout as you make your way up the steps here and very close to the Red Sox clubhouse, not far at all. Only one stairwell, and then you are nobody, on the field. And nobody's there, right? Nobody in the dugout. Guess nobody's what? there it's at this time. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That's right, because we're here at 2 o'clock. Yeah. You were here, though. Look, I'll yes. spin around. Uh, we're going to look at the press box where we work, and then you're going to see Dennis Eckersley who's here with me Thank at you. 2 o'clock this afternoon, ready to go. Couldn't wait. Saw Jeffrey Lyons, a movie critic, before the game. Tells me that my videos are atrocious, unwatchable. <laughs> <laughs> the great Red Sox fan, by the way, Jeffrey we, Lyons. we got everybody coming in the booth chirping away. So <laughs> I, can, I, I can't even concentrate. Jim Cott comes in here, and he won't leave, right? He's doing the MLB game. It's like, and he's a wonderful uh, guy. He can't the beat a better guy. Ever meet. But he can chirp, man. Yes, he can. And I'm over here, you know, grinding. I'm trying, I'm trying to, to lock figure, in. figure this thing out right. here, and he's been doing a thousand Zillion, zillion games, and he wants to chirp at, at six o'clock. Time out. I gotta get in the X zone. You yes. need to get out. Yes, it's, it's like I'm in the you know warming up. One of the greatest people ever, Jim Cott. Totally. Look at him. He can't sit down. He's always stands oh, up. I worked with him in 2009 for an entire series in Toronto, and my neck hurt by the end of it because I'm sitting. I'm not gonna stand the whole game. So I'm looking up at Jim Cott the entire game because he never sits. It's funny because every He's time big I, man. every time I stand up, I think of him. Yes, because that's Jim Cott's how he does a game. And then Bob Costas, Bob the little Costa, guy anyway, his, looking up at him. Bob right? Costas' neck is gonna hurt. I'm gonna tell you because <laughs> mine did. <laughs> Look at this. It hurts. It's already hurt. That's classic, isn't it? He is uh, a big man. And he's still chirping. Bob's least chirping at him. So we sit in these great, comfortable chairs here at Yankee Stadium. I'm not getting up. Are you gonna stand for any reason? No. Um, every once in a while, I'll really? stand up. Bounce yeah. around. Yeah, I bounce around. I feel like. Okay. I'm yeah. staying right here. Yeah. You never stand. How up. about Jeffrey Lyons? Yeah. Unwatchable. He said that? <laughs> I thought you were just kidding. No. <laughs> to right center field. And it's going to get down for a base hit. Holt's thinking too as he heads to second base. And the legend of Brock Holt continues. This is incredible. I hate to even talk while this guy's swinging the bat. I mean, the beat goes on with him hitting close to 350 off left handers coming in. And he's just hit anything you want to do, he does. A little hang and break a ball right there. Hits this, strokes this ball in the gap. Easy double for him. I mean, this is ridiculous what he's doing. I've never seen anything like the year that this kid has put on so far. Snatches a home run last inning. I mean, what in the world is going on? It's got to be like a dream sequence right now for Brock Holt. When things are going here, it's just not that easy. But he makes it look easy. I mean, he is a star in this league. There's nobody played as good as he's played since he's come up. Nobody. That's a heavy statement. Now Pedroia trying to get him in here. Red Sox trailing one to nothing as Dustin struck out looking in the first inning. Three strikeouts for Nuno so far tonight. Pedroia. Also struggling on this road trip along with many of the Red Sox. In the air to shallow left, Brett Gardner 
going over towards the line. Will make the catch with a second out. Holt can advance two down. If you want to relive the best Red Sox moments from this past week, then tune in Sunday night at 9.30 for the Ultimate Red Sox Show presented by a Triple A. Well, Pedroia had a nice swing at that ball. Now two down here in the third, and here's David Ortiz, his second look at Nuno. Ortiz popped out to Brian Roberts at second base in the first inning. I think he's in the shift again, and Roberts this time ducks three or four strides back onto the outfield grass as David's jumping back out of the way. And there you see Roberts. I leave Jeter on the left side, bring Kelly Johnson to the right side. He's hanging around second base. Swing and a miss. Pitch down and in. Same spot. I wonder what the mix up is right here. This fastball down and in. I mean, he was trying to launch this fastball. If he would have missed with this fastball out over the plate, he would have killed it. He's hitting at 261 against left handers. Six of his 18 home runs this season against lefties. Mm. And a swing and a foul tip for strike two. Boy, he's beating him. He beat him upstairs. He beat him down and in. Two fastballs. 90 mile an hour fastball right there. Napoli on deck, two down in the Boston third inning. Holt at second base. You would think he'd throw him another fastball. You'd see some wrinkle somehow here, down and away. Down for ball two, two and two. David eight for 25 on the trip, two homers, six RBIs. On the ground into the shift, it is Roberts in short right, throws out Big Poppy, and the Red Sox strand Holt in scoring position and trail one nothing.
160 label makers from WB Mason give you a million reasons to organize that mess. Get yours now for just $9.99. Available June only exclusively from WB Mason while supplies last. One to nothing. The Yankees have the lead as they come to bat here in the bottom of the third inning. Kelly Johnson, Brett Gardner, Derek Jeter to bat in the third. Two twenty five four homers 17 runs batted in for Johnson. You think about both these clubs the Red Sox and the Yankees that what halfway during the season and you start thinking how many home runs the Red Sox got 59 the Yankees 63. I mean when is that I mean these clubs used to hit 200 home runs apiece throughout the season totally different lineups they don't score. The Yankees have scored 10 more runs than the Red Sox. That's not saying much. But meanwhile, they're only three out. I mean, they're hanging in there. Yeah, for the Yankees, think of to share. He's got 14 home runs, been injured again this year, off and on again. And then you think about take Ortiz away, and right. the Red Sox have no pop. David with 18. Napoli has nine. And there's ball four to the number nine man. Kelly Johnson down to first base. First walk given up by Brandon Workman. Liverpool Football Club returns to Boston to face AS Roma on Wednesday, July 23rd for football at Fenway. Match will feature two of the most prominent clubs in European football. Tickets are on sale now. Go to RedSox.com slash football at Fenway to get your tickets today. Kelly Johnson with a leadoff walk. Now it's back to the top of the order and Brett Gardner. He struck out swinging in the first inning, one of two K's for Workman. Xander Bogart sit on the grass at third base. We're talking about will the Yankees make a move? You have to believe they will. But what's out there? I mean, I, what do they have to give away, as you mentioned earlier? They'd be here if they had them to give away. I'm, I mean, they've been limping along along with this rotation. I mean, they've got to do something. They can't just let this go. But he, they're not going to get David Price, and then nobody in Tampa's not going to let hand the Yankees David Price. That's the other question, I guess. Would David Price end up within the division? No way. Would they do that? No way. Whoever gets David Price at this point, I keep thinking that Oakland would do it because they need another starter. But they won't, I don't think they'll do it either. First and back to the bag is Johnson. But I tell you what, hitting Ortiz didn't really affect Price. I thought it would, you know, because he didn't look good in that whole episode. He did not. What he said didn't go over very well. Uh, but you see what he's done with the last five starts 10 punch outs or more doesn't happen very often this guy's talented guy. Joe's bunt pulls it back and takes a ball. You see this Yankee lineup with Gardner hitting first you'd think that Ellsbury would hit first but. You know and then you see Gardner go down to ninth you'd see that but he's having a nice year for them Gardner. He and Ellsbury both have. They can run. Power's not there for Ellsbury. What four home runs this year? Here's a bunt bid, and Workman will go to first base and be a sacrifice against Johnson, the second base for the first out here at the bottom of the third inning. You don't see that very often. Well, beautiful shots of Yankee Stadium as aerial coverage provided by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. A beautiful night in the Bronx for game one of this three game series between the Red Sox and the Yankees. New York getting a run in the first on a sack fly off the bat of Mark Teixeira. Now Jeter getting his second at bat against Workman. He's single to right in the first inning. In there for strike one. Jeter has played long enough that uh, he's a guy that you have faced in your career at the end of your career. Imagine that. 
40 years old. What yesterday his birthday? Yes. How did you fare against Jeter if you remember? I pitched him in <laughs> right from the get go. They said get him out in. He bites that stuff off. Hurt. Boy, he fought it off for 20 years. He got he's gotten hot to be where he's hitting 270. He wasn't he's been swinging pretty good lately. Power obviously is not going to be there anymore. But last year was huge for him, you know, trying to come back from that ankle. I mean, that's hard to do at 39 years old. What's hard to do is to try to play and say goodbye everywhere you go. No two pitch to the left, and he collects his second hit of the night. Having a wait was Johnson, so he just arrives at third now. He was camped out about halfway to see if Gomes would come in to try to catch that. And it's now first and third with one down. He tried to get a fastball in Workman, and then he did. He got it up and in, but he fought it off. Pitcher's been doing this to Jeter a long, long time. He pulls his hands in and gets a good part of the wood on it. Falls in in front of Gomes. Kelly can only get the third base. First and third with one out. Two hits tonight for Derek Jeter. As Jacoby Ellsbury now coming up, he doubled in the first inning. Seven year contract signed during the offseason with the Yankees. Extends through 2020 with the club option for 2021. 297 average with Boston. 241 stolen bases. 21 stolen bases this year. I don't think he'll ever see the 32 home runs out of Ellsbury again. I mean, that was an incredible year he had. Second in MVP voting. One one pitch is gonna miss for ball two. That's your Justin Verlander ended up getting. I thought he should have been the MVP. Nothing against Verlander. Pitchers shouldn't win the MVP. Believe me. That's coming from a pitcher who did win an MVP. Yes. Uh -huh. I'm telling you. You asked about uh, the home runs. We do that again. You think you can steal 70 bases again? It's another question. Runners at the corners at 2 1. Going to miss high. Brzezinski tried to bring it down. Yeah, Workman's been upstairs with his fastball. You see the cutter upstairs. I thought there was a year that Pedro could have won the MVP. Oh, I mean, it's funny because the year Pedro had it, one, I mean, you couldn't be any better than that. No way. And then I think uh, Pudge Rodriguez won it behind the plate that year, 99. Why do you think it shouldn't be a pitcher? Well, because I think that award is made for an everyday player. I just do. I mean, I, I totally Cy get Young's it. Cy for the pitcher? Yes, exactly. I'm not giving it back, but. <laughs> <laughs> Three ones foul to the straight full count. I mean, let alone a, a relief pitcher. I mean, throw right to like 80 innings that year. But the, you know, the year that Verlander had was awesome, 24 and 4, whatever it was, and Pedro. But it's, it, that award is for an everyday player. These guys play every day. I don't remember hearing you say that when you won it. <laughs> <laughs> First and third, one down. Ellsbury winning on a 3 2 pitch. There goes the runner at first, and ball the four. pitch is ball four. Second walk of the inning, second walk of the outing allowed by Workman. Bases loaded. Well, the New England Dunkin' Donuts franchisees are proud to support the Dana Farber Cancer Institute and the Jimmy Fund for the 22nd year. This year's Donuts to Donate program runs from June 21st through June 29th. Guests who donate a dollar at Dunkin' Donuts be invited to write their name on a donut pinup and display it to show their support. Bases filled with the Yankees here in the third inning. Two of them there by walks, one by a single. 
And now you're dealing with a cleanup hitter in Mark Teixeira. Get you a ground ball right here. They're giving up a run in a heartbeat. Sloppy breaking ball tonight. We've only seen a couple of good ones so far from him. I think the time off has anything to do with that. Oh, absolutely. Fastball's been up. He's kind of, you know, he muscles it anyway. Share two for six this year. The base is loaded. And a big swing and a miss there. Where did that come from? That ball was just, it looked like a changeup. It just sort of stopped right down the middle. I guess it was a cutter. Kind of missed it. Got lucky to get away with that. The sheriff fights it off foul and is down one and two. Well, he beat him right there with a fastball in. Beltron waiting on deck. Big pitch right here. And to Shara strikes out. Workman gets his third strikeout. Could come at a better time. Boy, he came up with a beauty. Finally threw a curveball. This biting curveball couldn't come at a better time. One two curveball. Got him out front. As good as it gets there. Nika Insurance, great service, great coverage, and a great price for auto, home, or life insurance. A big second out here in the third inning for Brandon Workman, and it brings up Carlos Beltran. Grounded out to Mike Napoli, unassisted at first base. And now up with the bases loaded here in the third inning. He'll take strike Hard. one. One for four this year in this category. Ten grand slams in his career. With Johnson at third, Jeter at second, Ellsbury at first. Workman trying to work his way around two walks in the inning. There's strike two. Well, he has really focused in. This is what you call stretch pitches, back to back cutters. Good spot for it. Got a lot of options right here, hook in the dirt. High cheese in, whatever. Take your choice here. Beltron shops it to first. Napoli's got it. Going to need Workman. He's over to cover for the out. And Workman does work his way around. Two walks and a base is loaded situation. One nothing, New York.
brings you to people who care about your community. Eastern Bank is committed to putting you first. Learn all the ways Eastern puts you first at easternbank.com. Beautiful conditions on this summer weekend. The Red Sox and the Yankees playing from the Bronx. The Yankees on top, one to nothing to the top of the fourth we go. Mike Napoli, Johnny Gomes, A.J. Pierzynski here in the fourth inning. Hey. Pretty good opportunity there for the Yankees and Workman battled his way out of that. That was battling right there. You know, he walked Ellsbury and then Teixeira, really the toughest out at this point. Came back with a one-two hook and got him. And then Nunez is out there throwing a pearl out gem, isn't he? He is indeed. So far, so good. Three strikeouts, a walk, two hits. But it's not come as advertised. So far, it's been pretty good. Second time around. So what kind of adjustments the Red Sox make against him. Okay. Napoli doesn't make any. He strikes out again. Second time looking, and that's four strikeouts for Nuno. Curveball he starts him off with for strike one. Fastball blew it by him and fastball away. Strike three. Three pitches and a punch out. One down on the fourth for Nuno. And here is Johnny Gomes. Single to left field in the second. One of two Red Sox hits. The other belonging to Brock Holt. Double to right center field in the third inning. Jones swing to the first pitch pops it up foul ground McCann coming back and he'll make the catch two down not much foul ground behind home plate but enough for McCann two down well, the cardiovascular institute at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center invites you to join the club the walking club gives free tools and tips to get you and your family walking towards better health more at bidmc.org slash walking seen a lot of high fastballs them not doing anything with you see the fastball right there Gomes popping it straight back two down for AJ Pierzynski fly to right first time up it's tied up inside for ball one I mean he's thrown a lot of high fastballs It's that one by AJ. Foul tip. I mean, this is the guy they have to beat. I mean, you come into this series. You got Tanaka tomorrow. You know, strike two. Softly lined and caught by Jeter. Stride on the outfield grass. It's an eight pitch fourth inning and one nothing Yankees lead.
economy and community strong. That's why they've been named the number one SBA lender in Massachusetts five years in a row. Eastern Bank, here, your first. Central Park and a beautiful night in New York. The Yankees have a 1 0 lead. And it's the bottom of the fourth inning. Ryan McCann to get it started. Workman pitching for his life last inning. Bases loaded to Shera. Biggest pitch of the game, that curveball to Shera right now. Can popped out his first time up now. The infield in and Bogart's in on the grass at 30, just shoots it by him. And into left field for a base hit. That's the fourth Yankees hit of the night. Well, tomorrow in Dining Playbook with Billy Costa and Jenny Johnson catch up with Boston Boys, the new kids on the block. And here's Sox pitcher Craig Breslow's five favorite restaurants in the city. Catch all that and more tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Lead runner on for the Yankees. And Roberts fly out to the warning track in right field. Catch made by Brock Holt out there. Swings away, pops it up, left side of the infield. Xander Bogarts puts it away, one down. I like tonight a lot of talk about to the Red Sox rotation. What's going to happen? John Farrell announcing what his rotation will be after this series. And initially, Ruby De La Rosa was going to be in that rotation. And Against the Cubs next week. That's not the case. Jake Peavy is going to make his scheduled start on Monday. And I think after the last start, some people may have wondered whether Jake Peavy would come out of the rotation or there be a move. Yeah, I think people are still wondering about that. But uh, I think that the Red Sox are hoping that he can come out of this thing a little bit. I mean, going forward, if he doesn't, obviously they've got to do something. But these guys all of a sudden swinging at the first pitch. Guards and foul ground takes care of out number two. But going forward, you know, you thought they talked about even De DeBron starting against the Cubs and they changed there. And then Farrell made it clear that DeBron has to pitch himself back into this rotation. But he talked thing, about him, but he didn't really not talk about De La Rosa. No, at the not moment. at all. I think they're just, they don't, they want him in the rotation. I really do believe that. But it all depends on Peavy. And, uh, you know, is there some value? Are you, they're working on something. <laughs> I don't know what they're working on, but they'd love to probably move somebody. And, In a uh, PV situation, you have to eat a lot of that. You got it. You got and it. That's the issue probably more than anything. Yeah, it's not that simple to just say, well, let's just take PV out of the rotation, put him in the bullpen, and put uh, De La Rosa in that position. Well, if he has another bad start, it may happen. This one fouled off down the left field line. You take a look at PB's year, and again, he hasn't won since April 25th, but a lot of those outings in between, he pitched well enough to get wins. And that's what happens when you have a stinker like he did last time out. You know, it makes you look like he's just, you've been bad all season long. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I think that he deserves to be in the rotation necessarily, but this is a veteran. I've been in his position before. Uh oh. High drive. Deep right field for Kelly Johnson who's have enough. It does. And then some. Wow. Two run shot for Kelly Johnson, his fifth of the year. The number nine man with his two run shot has put the Yankees on top three to nothing. I mean, this ball is absolutely crushed. I mean, we're over here chirping about the rotation, and this guy goes yard. I mean, hadn't had that great a season. His fifth home run. He's got that kind of power. Strikes out a lot, but he gets a pitch that he can handle from Workman. Middle, middle fastball. See ya. This ball is smothered. Look at where this ball lands. My goodness. So a two run shot. We're just talking about uh, the lack of home runs from both these teams this year. And Kelly Johnson gets his fifth of the year. Now Brett Gardner takes strike one. His third plate appearance struck out in the first get a sacrifice bunt in the third. I mean, you throw the ball upstairs. I don't care how hard you throw it. You throw it in a bad spot. These guys are trying to leave. Oh. That's why uh, Nuno the other side has thrown a ton of high fastballs and we haven't lost any of them yet. Everybody else is losing them off him except us.
I mean, he had to work so hard last inning. Yeah, get out of the bases loaded jam by striking out to Shera, getting Beltron to ground out to first. A taxing inning. He also walked two in that inning. I mean, he's worked hard this this whole appearance. You know, the first inning he got in trouble, only gave up one run. He's had a lot of stress throws up to this point. There's strike two. In the air to right field. Brock Holt is headed back at the wall. And that's gone. The Yankees go back to back. First Kelly Johnson, now Brett Gardner. And it's 4 0 New York. Tell you what, you get behind in the count, three and one. He sees a fastball, looks at it, three and two, and this ball right here, this kid, he's got a little pop. You don't think he can hit this ball on a line like that? He stings it. This three-two pitch. I think he tries to cut this ball a little bit. No fastball down middle. When you're looking for it, I mean, you better be, you better put it where you want to. That ball is down a little bit, but he's looking fastball. Now Derek Jeter with two outs in the inning. And grounded by the mound. Pedroia at second slides over and throws out Jeter to end the inning. But the damage done. Yankees homer twice back to back. Lead it 4 0. To you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at Southwest.com. Four nothing Yankees on top of the Red Sox. We head into the fifth before we get started. Send it down to Gary Streisky. Guys, after winning 16 games and dropping 20 in their current 36 games in 37 day streak. Any break is a good break, even if that break means getting into New York City on their only off day since June 5th at 9 o'clock in the morning and not getting to bed till about 10 o'clock in the morning here in New York after a six-hour flight from Seattle, talking to a couple of the players before the game. They were saying, you know, when you're not winning as many games as you'd like to see win on these big stretches, any break, even if it means just one day in New York, is a good break. Fortunately, they got one today. Need a couple more runs here to make that pay off. Fortunately, also, July looking good with two off days, guys, including the All-Star break. 
It was a long trip from Seattle to say the least to, to get in here yesterday morning. You know Don we don't play. I, right. I, don't, I don't know what happened to yesterday. What, what happened to yesterday? It's gone. It's gone. It wasn't a day. I, I don't even know there was such a thing. I mean, <laughs> June 26th, as far as we're concerned, didn't happen. Didn't happen. <laughs> and we're not playing. Teixeira in foul ground makes the catch for the first out of the inning. Yeah, team get in about 9 o'clock. You, know, you get your bags around 10. I think I get to sleep about 10.30 a.m. I'll tell you what. The, for a little bit, the anyway. Trip, the trip that I took, I and mean, then we don't play once again, and I obviously I don't. I, this was a very difficult trip. I mean, I know players once again are tough. They, you know, they're baseball players. Right. They they make a lot of money, and and that's what their job is. It was ridiculous. It started tough, a four-hour kind of mechanical delay on the ground, and then the six-hour flight. So it was ten hours on the plane to San Francisco to get horrible. it started. It that's horrible. right out of the shoot. <laughs> I mean, that's no excuse. No, but, but it happened. A, but it happened. <laughs> it's just. I mean, I mean, this is a difficult game to play when you're feeling good, let alone having some rough days. And you keep in mind the Red Sox really home, what, to about four and a half days so with the getaway day in between the Cleveland Detroit Baltimore trips. This month of June, you look at that schedule, you knew it was going to be difficult. Now, moving forward, you get a lot of home games coming up against the teams that you could beat. Yeah, you got to turn this thing around. And uh, it's do or die, really, right now. I mean, this series to me. You can't let this series get away from you. I mean, if you if you happen to get swept swept here in New York, don't even think about it. But tonight is the game you're supposed to win if there's such a thing. Drew gets jammed, fouls it back. Well, if you're a Red Sox fan, you'll surely want to follow Nesson on Instagram. Our photographers and on-air talent offer another unique way to see all the happenings behind the scenes of your favorite teams. Follow Nesson on Instagram now. One out here in the fifth, Stephen Drew takes a 2 2 outside. Jackie Bradley Jr. waiting on deck, one down here in the fifth. Popped up, foul ground for Kelly Johnson. Second out of the inning, kind of a twilight time right now, but. He was able to find the baseball for the second out of the inning. Well, top New York tourist attractions are the list tonight. If you have a comment about these tonight's list, tweet us at hashtag Nesson List. Two outs in the fifth inning. With Jackie Bradley Jr. coming up. Rounded back to the mound in the third inning. It is now seven in a row retired by Nuno. This guy's having the game of his life tonight. And 12 of the last 13. Now it's by him at 91 miles an hour. Four run lead helps him a little bit here, feeling pretty good. No one seems to pick up on that high gas. I wouldn't even call it gas, it's just. But you wouldn't call it salad, right? No. Somewhere in between no. mediocre cheese. Yeah. I'm starting to get it. Yeah. Every time I start, but I don't want to it drop out. it on him, but yeah. he, you know, he hasn't pitched very well this year, and you can't assume anything just because he's pitched poorly. It's a big league pitcher. One hop picked at third by Johnson gets Bradley Jr. and the Sox are down in order. In fact, it's eight in a row. Retired by Nuno. Four nothing, New York.
Square, New York. And here's tonight's Coors timeless moment on June 27, 2003. Red Sox scored 10 runs before the first out is made in the first inning against the Florida Marlins, as they were known then, setting a major league record. Johnny Damon becomes the first player in major league history to hit a single, a double, and a triple in the same inning. Sox went on to score 14 runs in the inning and win the game 25 to 8. Pitch up and in to Kobe Ellsbury to begin things here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Wasn't that the game where the Marlins got mad because we yes. kept scoring? Like, Jack McKeon yes. at the time as a manager felt that uh, they had, there was enough, was enough. It was a uh, sacrifice, sacrifice fly. fly exactly. That, <laughs> You're not supposed to score. No. Sacrifice fly. <laughs> fly ball out to left center field. Johnny Gomes will give way to the center fielder. Bradley Jr. makes the catch. First out of the bottom of the fifth inning. Lung cancer is the number one cancer killer of women. Donate to the American Lung Association at any CVS pharmacy location. Now through June 29th, CVS Pharmacy is the official pharmacy of the Boston Red Sox. Now Bradley Jr. headed over to right center field here. Red Sox heading into the shift on uh, Mark Deshera on the right side. As the shift with Pedroia guarding the line, really over on the shift, but also a pole position. Grounder foul, one and one. And the pitching line is brought to you by Ace Ticket from Brandon Workman. Four and a third, six hits, four runs are all earned on two home runs. One for Kelly Johnson, one for Brett Gardner. They came back to back. Walk two, struck out three. And now curveball misses for ball two. And he's been rusty, there's no doubt about it. You know, but home run ball, you give up home runs anytime, whether you're you know on top of your game or not. In this ballpark, you, it's tough to keep the ball in the ballpark. Hey. A strike call, two and two. That's 70 pitches now for Workman. Shara hit a sack fly to left field in the first inning and then struck out. The base is loaded in the third inning. Now it's a grounder back up the middle into center field. A base hit. His first hit of the night. The Yankees have their seventh. Well, you can't play up the middle if you got three guys on the right hand side. Somebody's got to stay on the left hand side. To share at first base, one down for Carlos Beltran. He is 0 for 2. He's grounded out to first base on two occasions. Like Napoli up to the task both times. Hey. Strike one. The Red Sox facing Carlos Beltran and the St. Louis Cardinals World Series last year. He shoots this a foul ball just to the left of the line. Barely foul. That was trouble right there. He almost took that ball out of the catcher's glove. It's late on a fastball. Almost chalked down the line. This is close. This is a hair from being fair. More than a hair. It's scary. Miss with ball one, one and two. Workman at 74 pitches down. There is action behind him. Craig Breslow first up in the Boston pen. Beltron swings and misses and strikes out. He baffled him there. Picks up his fourth K. Two down. He's punched him out twice with the same pitch last time up. Curveball. Once again, curveball here. Not his best curveball. Kept it outside. Two down here in the fifth inning for Brian McCann. And has popped out to first and single to left. 
Scored last time he singled. Napoli holding on to Shera at first base. This pitch foul back for strike one. Well, HB Hood is a sponsor of the Red Sox Foundation, which has now provided more than 68 million to help the families of New England. We thank the kind people at Hood and we salute the Red Sox Foundation. On the ground right side, it is Drew with the shift on, who throws out Brian McCann and ends the fifth inning. Played five innings, it's 4 0 New York. Holt, Pedroia, and Ortiz coming up. Photo to hashtag Nesson fan photo for a chance to be shown in our broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. Tonight's fan photo is from Jackie J. Enjoying his first game at Fenway. Well, the Red Sox will be home at Fenway finally on Monday after this weekend series from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. Where the Yankees have a 4-0 advantage out hitting the Red Sox 7-2. We get into inning number six and the top. Of the Red Sox order Brock Holt to lead it off. He has walked and doubled as one of only two hits for the Red Sox in this game against Vidal Nuno. There is strike one. Becky is definitely surprised tonight. Well, you know, you have one time around, you say, okay, and then the second time around, well, this is the time. Somebody, they got to make some sound here. Jumps ahead 0 2. Nuno coming into tonight's game 1 and 4 with a 5.88 earn run average. His 80th pitch. And he's going to miss for ball one. Well, he's feeling pretty good about himself right now. A couple of hits, five innings. Tired last eight batters in a row. Hold down the left field line. Gardner on the run, but that'll get into the seats. Foxwoods Resort Casino is the official resort casino and proud partner of the Boston Red Sox. Action in the pen now as Dylan Batances begin to warm in the Yankees' pen. Incredible year that kid's having. Swing and a miss, elevates at 91, and Holt strikes out five strikeouts for Vidal Nuno. What in the world is going on here, huh? 
two fastballs down and away, puts him away with a fastball up middle. It's like he's tricking him with that high cheese. One down here in the sixth inning, nine in a row, retired by Nuno. Here's Dustin Pedroia. He struck out, flied out. He'll take strike one. It seems like he's been pitching ahead all night. Yeah, that's about one thing that he's been doing well. I mean, Pedroia had a good swing at the pitch that he found. He screwed, he flew out to left field last time, but so what? It was an out. They need base runners. Ground ball down third baseline. Johnson with the throw across and into the runner, but the tag applied anyway for Teixeira. And there are two outs here in the sixth inning. Well, for every Red Sox hit in June, Echo Store Technologies will donate $50 to the Sean Thornton Foundation to help find a cure for Parkinson's disease and pediatric cancer. To learn more, log on to EchoStore.com. Echo Store Technologies, your data center solutions provider. Two outs in the sixth inning. And David Ortiz gets his third at bat against Nuno. Pops it up. Down the third baseline, long run, but no play. Cheater giving chase with the shift on. Seems like yesterday he was diving into the front row of the seats in that general area at the old Yankee it. Stadium. That extra inning game against the Red Sox. If you're doing a highlight film, that's got to be on it. It was unbelievable. It he really came out was. all bloodied and with the ball in hand. Ortiz takes a look at strike two. Boy, he's just feeling it. This kid, you know, he got through four, five. Here he's in the sixth inning, just styling. Retired 14 of the last 15. And 10 in a row. Only base runner that has visited second base for the Red Sox. Brock Holt doubled in the third inning. Ooh, breaking ball. Two and two. He laid off a tough pitch. Out there again. Full count. Mike Napoli waiting on deck. There are two outs here in the sixth inning. Three two fastball. See how far David could hit it. In the air down the left field line. Brett Gardner is over towards the line and reaches in but can't catch it. Ortiz will get another chance. Almost a great catch right there. That's cement down that line there. He runs out of room and jumps. You can slam your rib cage into that cement. That's not the DL waiting to happen right wow. there. Oh, he did get a little glove on that. That's saying off the glove and into the seats. 3 2 breaking ball he threw. Look out. Ooh. Up and in, and Ortiz down to first base with two down. That Breaks up the string of 10 in a row. Gardner right off the glove. What a great attempt by Gardner. There's some padding right there, but I don't know if that's enough. And Girardi coming out after the hook. string is broken up here. Five and two thirds and quite an outing by Nudio who departs and the crowd appreciates it.
getting the job done tonight, Eck. With fastballs, five strikeouts on the night, and you talk about fastball look at Pedroia. Napoli looking on the corner. See a hook here to Bogart. Back to the fastball to Napoli looking again. And then the fastball by Bolt. They got him out of time. He gave up a walk, and he got him out of there. He was happy with him. Joe Girardi was thrilled with five and two-thirds. The departs responsible for the runner at first base. The pitching line for Nuno brought to you by your Eastern Lexus dealers. Two walks, five Ks, 91 pitches for him. Departs responsible for Ortiz at first base. As the breaking ball drops in there for a strike to Napoli. It's called to the bullpen. It's brought to you by your local New England Ford dealers. Dylan Batances into the game here for New York. 33rd appearance, 4 0, the nifty 1.43 earned run average. 72 strikeouts, 13 walks, and just a buck 33, the batting average against him. Hello. So Come numbers. on. <laughs> this kid is the man. I mean, he has been, you know, where would they be without him, too? You talk about out of the bullpen, I mean, multiple innings. The punch outs are ridiculous. Problem has always been control with him. Six foot eight. And there's ball four. He walks Napoli. So walks first batter that he faces. Two on with two down. Well, don't miss Red Sox game day live presented by DCU Digital Federal Credit Union Monday at 6:30. DC and Wake will have an Anthony Rizzo profile. DCU Digital Federal Credit Union. What can DCU save you? Why is it so much harder for taller pitchers as far as mechanics go? It seems to keep it in line. Well, I mean, just the, the velocity. If you throw real hard to begin with, if you're off a tick. It's hard to have command, let alone being six eight. I mean, it works for you, I guess, with your leverage. But I don't know. It's tough enough being just an average height. You would think you have an advantage, but then again, there's a disadvantage with being so tall. You let it go. It seems to me, if you try to throw too hard, you'd be everything's high. <laughs> You're six eight. Everything's high. I think guys like Randy Johnson, and he was. I mean, and Andrew was, Miller. Yeah, I mean, I think they all tall guys have hard, you know, command issues. A pinch hitter coming up here for the Red Sox. Daniel Navas pinch hitting for Johnny Gomes with two on and two outs. Gomes tonight had been one for two with a single, one of only the two hits the Red Sox have tonight. Of a six for 15 on the trip. It's five for 11 in the series against the Mariners. And he'll take strike one. See, Nava took a long time to get to the plate. I saw him over there talking. They have those charts on the pitchers, probably telling him what he's got. What he's got is he got gas and a nasty breaking ball, is what he's got. Victor Rodriguez with the charts. Naba fouls it off just to the left of the Red Sox dugout. We can't watch all the World Cup games. Head over to Nesson.com for all your coverage. Visit Nesson.com slash World Cup to see previews of every game, live blogs of every United States match, and podcasts with international soccer journalists. Go two. And he's going to miss low. One and two outside as well. Seventy-two strikeouts for Batances. That is first among all relievers in the majors. With mean, that kind of gas, if you've got to break a ball and you haven't seen it yet, this is so difficult to hit. There you go. The ground ball hits the bag, and Johnson's going to tag the bag. Came up on him, hit the bag, and he tags it ahead of Ortiz. It's 4 0 Yankees through five and a half.
catch by Brock Holt in right field. It'll make the grab out there. Bob a home run. Bob's discount furniture going to bat for the Jimmy Fund once again. Bob will donate one thousand dollars to the Jimmy Fund for every game saved this season. Everybody saves at Bob's. Bob's discount furniture, quality, choice, and value. Learn more at mybob's.com. There's a drive to right that is going to hook foul. Ryan Roberts making another bid. It was his ball that was caught by Brock Holt. Every time a ball goes in the air to right field, they think it's gone. Got a chance. Yeah. Also feel that way when we're in Philadelphia. The you know, one pitch. And this is driven out towards right center field. Jackie Bradley Jr. on the run and will get there. Wow, can he cover a lot of ground? Every time a ball's in the air, it's like I think he's going to catch everything. I mean, he's so smooth. This ball looked like it caught his heel. You could see a lot of ball. I mean, he gets such a great jump. I mean, this ball is not exactly crushed, but it's in, it's in the alley there. You see him catch it. You see a lot of ball. Where's that ball hit? No one in there. Why did I think it's caught him in the heel? Seeing things. Well, he opened it to show you once he <laughs> caught it. Yeah. Maybe that's what you saw. Maybe that's what I saw. Here's Ichiro with one out, and he'll take strike one. Nava stays in the game, incidentally. He is in the left field after pinch hitting for Gomes and limbering up out there and left. Ichiro 0 for 2. And he lines it to center. Bradley will be there, too. Two down. Well, stay tuned tonight following WB Mason's Extra Innings Live. for Red Sox Final presented by Insurance. Send your questions to TC at hashtag Sox Final. Maybe yours will be answered on Red Sox Final presented by Insurance. Two outs here in the sixth inning. And Kelly Johnson coming up. Walked in the third. Homered in the fourth. The two-run shot for Johnson. His fifth home run of the year. There's strike one. This would be the first of two home runs for the Yankees in the fourth inning as they went back to back. And Johnson gets RBIs 18 and 19. And time for the Yankees are on top 3 0. Gardner would then homer, and the Yankees have a 4 0 lead. Bounce in. Red Sox had Craig Breslow warming last inning, but no action this inning as Workman has the first two outs of the inning. There's Gardner on deck. Swing and a miss, and Workman strikes out Johnson. It's a 1 2 3 sixth, but a 4 0 New York lead through six.
tonight is brought to you by Ace Ticket, the official ticket partner of the Boston Red Sox. Back in New York where the Red Sox trail four to nothing to the Yankees as we head into the seventh inning. AJ Przinsky, Xander Bogart, Stephen Drew. To right field and over is Ichiro to make the catch for the first out of the seventh inning. Tansis coming in to get the final out of the sixth as the first out of the seventh and there's Xander Bogarts who has struck out and fouled out. Joe Girardi has to be pleased with what he got from Nuno in tonight's game. Oh he's got to be thrilled. I mean you take a guy out of the game when he four nothing lead he walks somebody. And he's gone. In he's five and two thirds. Thank you. Two hits no runs. Who came in one and four with a 5.88 really had been roughed up. Fouled off 0 and 2. MLB.tv Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, celebrating 12 years. Join the millions of subscribers. Watch every out of market game live and in true HD on over 400 devices. Visit RedSox.com for details. Bogarts lays off and takes the ball one and two close this, pitch. This kid's been an all star setup guy. I mean if there's a time that. He deserves to be in the all star game. I mean you didn't see it years ago no. setup guys going to the all star game. Very hard to get there because you get all the starters you get all the closers. The guys in between kind of get left off and a slip there by Batances. Unless you've got these kind of numbers. Remember there was a year there where Bard got left off when he was. Basically, the best setup man in Major League Baseball for a time. You think about Timlin. Timlin, yes. what he did for the Red Sox mm -hmm. all those years wasn't overlooked by Red Sox fans. But once again, I say, you know, didn't. I don't think he did make an All Star team, did he? When he was with the Red Sox, I don't think so. I don't believe he did. Now they're going to come out and check on Batances. He slipped on that last delivery. They'll bring the trainer out as well. It was an awkward ending to that pitch. That's a big man. Twist his ankle or look how he's huge. What's he do here? Oh, it's his back leg. Sort of gives out on him. He, his plant leg was fine, but he just sort of collapsed. His back side collapsed. Okachima made it one year, didn't he? We did. Yes. Yeah, by the fan vote. By the fan vote, right. Which is uh, the final couple. The online vote, I should say. Fan vote, of course, is the starters. I think last year Toronto had a couple of guys. Delabar made it. There's strike three. Bogarts didn't like it. First strikeout for Batances is 73rd of the year. It's time for a Toyota game break and Tom Karen, TC. Okay, Tom, thanks very much. Back here high atop Yankee Stadium as Stephen Drew takes strike one. That's been the thing to do the last few years, right? Those Cuban defectors, you talk about power hitters that you can have. Brady is amazing. Oh, he is amazing. Would they give him $60 million? And before him, you talk about Puig, right? You give him a ton of money. Obviously, Cespedes with Oakland. I mean, it goes on and on, yep. and it's going to keep going. Drew 0 for 2 tonight. Fly to right in the second. Fouled out in the fifth. Shoots one down the left field line, and Gardner is not going to get there. One hops the wall and into the seats. A ground rule double for Stephen Drew, and that breaks up a string of 0 for his last 24 on this road trip. Boy, he's loving that. That'll help. Man, he's feeling it. Fastball away. 
Fastball down away. Nice piece of hit and just carves this ball down the left field line. One hops the seats. Ground rule double. That's a double anywhere. Right into your living room. And there for a strike to Jackie Bradley Jr. He's grounded back to the mound, grounded out to third base. Stephen Drew, that's his third double of the year and third extra base hit of the year. He's taking a long time to start heating up, that's for sure. Up high, one and two. Stays alive, still one and two. Hung him a breaking ball in his eyes, fouled it off. It's Bradley Jr. now. Brock Holt would be next. There are two outs here in the seventh inning. The Sox have mustered three hits, and one just happened with two outs in the inning. Swing and a miss. Batanza strikes out Bradley Jr. Picks up his second K. Seventh inning stretch with the Yankees on top, four nothing. Starter for the Red Sox working into the seventh inning, trailing four to nothing, and look at his work tonight. To me, it all came down to that third inning, getting out of a bases loaded jam, but then uh, you see the punch out right from the get go. You see the good curveball, that was a bases loaded jam. So he showed a good curveball tonight so far. His fastball's been in and out. He got stunned by a couple of home run balls. That one, the first one, the two run shot that was crushed. It was two outs, one on, and then back to back. 3 2 fastball down middle and uh, Gardner hit it out. And he was disturbed. You know, you, you give up three runs with two outs. 
Back to back home runs have had a shocking little hard to take. Well, game summary is brought to you by Xfinity and Workman so far through the first six innings, giving up four runs, seven hits. Nuno is uh, the real surprise, five and two thirds, allowing no runs on just two hits for the Red Sox. And Kobe Ellsbury had a good night, two for three with a double and a run scored as New York comes to bat in the bottom of the seventh inning. And as Workman starts this inning, there is action again in the Red Sox pen, and again, it is Craig Breslow. Top of the Yankees order to face Workman here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Brett Gardner, Derek Jeter, and Jacoby Ellsbury anticipated. Action for the Yankees. Adam Warren, right hander up. Gardner takes strike one. Gardner with a strikeout in the first inning, sack bun in the third, and then the solo shot, part of the back to back home runs for New York in the fourth inning. On a strike to Gardner. Yeah, a little rusty after not pitching. How can you not be? You know, hasn't pitched in 12 days. You can throw on the side all you want. Just obviously it's not the same. Basically, two swings of the bat. Fastball like Johnson and back to back Gardner. I mean, two pitches. This is the home run back in the fourth. And once again, you know, you talk about this is a back to back job. There's a kind of pop that Gardner had, but he's looking fastball three and two and stunk for three runs in the fourth inning. Popped up, back, foul, and out of play. But don't miss Red Sox first pitch presented by Men's Warehouse, proudly introducing Joseph Abood. TC and Wake will look back at the 1914 Red Sox Cubs World Series. That's Monday at 6 p.m. on Nesson. The Chicago Cubs coming into town beginning Monday night. Weren't they here a couple of years ago, right? It was a yes. big deal. Of course, the Red Sox have been there twice. To Wrigley Field on the ground foul. The Cubs are 33 and 44, 14 games out in the National League Central. Two two pitch to Gardner on the ground chopped to first Napoli will flip to workman for the out six in a row retired by a workman one down here in the seventh and Derek Jeter coming up and yesterday he is 40th birthday. Single in the first, a single in the third before he grounded out. The second base in the fourth inning. Only multi hit night for a Yankee. Hey. Strike one. On the field, foul ground. And the home plate umpire has noticed it. Joe Girardi and Tony Payne letting him know. And now he's going to head over and grab it. You wonder what the ending is going to be like for Derek Jeter at Fenway Park, right? The last last series last of the year. Series of the year. And 
imagine it'll be similar to what we saw in Mariano Rivera, the response to Mariano in his last visit to Fenway Park. What do you think? Same thing? Oh, absolutely. You know, you 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 wonder are either one of these clubs going to be in it. You know, for a wild card or division, who knows? I mean, it's hard to say right now. Both clubs not playing all that well. But he would like to go out. You know, playoff time in the playoffs. You think about all the postseason. I mean, it's ridiculous. He's got a whole season full of at bats in the postseason. On the ground foul outside of third. We're talking to Joe Torre about him in spring training. We had Joe Torre on. And, you know, he's in so many World Series so quickly in his the beginning of his career. And Joe was saying, hey, it's not going to be like this every year, just so you know. Totally. <laughs> but it was that way for him in the beginning of his career. Line down the right field line foul. Coming up on Carter's Carter Ustremski's uh, hits. Uh, he's about maybe 30, 40 away from Yaz. No, amaze me. He's the only member of the Yankees that have 3,000 hits. Think of all the great Yankees that have come through. There was a big night when he went ahead of Lou Gehrig. Right? Yes. 2 2. Fouled oh, at the plate. Set it down to Gary. Yeah, guys, as you mentioned, Derek Jeter turning the big 4 0. His bat, though, uh, still staying in the 25 year old range. Two hits on the night. And if you want to make yourself feel any older, how about this? He's 40. When he made his MLB debut with the Yankees back in 1995, Jackie Bradley Jr. was just entering kindergarten. It gets better. Xander Bogarts was just three years old. Brock Holt, he was a first grader. There you go. Label on that. Well, that's what happens when you play that long. <laughs> play with kids that could be your son. What do you say when you're a fossil, right? <laughs> yeah. When you play to your you're a fossil. Right. That's what happens. If you're lucky enough to play this game that long. Two two. Ryan foul into the seats. Got to be good to hang around. Well, you know, playing shortstop one of the most demanding positions. There was a time when some thought the best shortstop on the Yankees was playing at third base, and right. Alex Rodriguez, he weathered that storm, remained at short. Fouled off to the right, out of play. You know, I, I'm amazed at him being in New York, living in New York, and you know, under this scrutiny, and it, it, he's been clean as a whistle. I mean. Nothing ever comes his way. No, no controversy, zero. Class all the way. Class all the way. Probably one of the most respected players ever. Maybe in the game. Yes. 2-2 Two -two is to shallow right center. And it'll be Brock Holt who makes the catch for the second out of the seventh inning. We'll tune in tonight after the game to Nesson Sports Today, presented by People's United Bank. Ellen Sarah will have reaction from last night's NBA draft, and Jamie Erdahl will have a report on tomorrow's NHL draft. See what Know How can do. Two down in the seventh, and Jacoby Ellsbury coming up. Ellsbury has been on twice, double and a walk before flying out to center field in the fifth. This kid workman boy, he's battled his way to get you into the seventh inning with two outs. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Says Chris Siegel. He agrees with you. Hard to lay off that curveball, nasty curveball. I know hey. you were a pointer. Did you point to the umpire at third base if you wanted to check? 
Marshall, yeah. your catcher handled. Yeah, I probably you, did. You handled that. Yeah, if yeah. I'm pointing, I'm pointing yeah. everywhere. I know you were a pointer. <laughs> it's a habit I had. <laughs> I want that. I yeah. want that. I was begging him. Yeah. See that? Right. Did you see that? <laughs> no two pitch, a check swing foul. I usually pointed when I thought it was a strike. I mean, not strike two, strike three. You don't point strike two. You point strike three, right? Right. Call it. You ever point on deck and no next guy? Oh, you? Yes. Next. Next. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just told the guy to get up there, not the guy on deck. Oh. Because he was taking his time. You want him in the box? I want him hurt. Let's go. Bounce around. Yeah, bounce around. Yeah, so that's what you're, you're doing. Last out. You were not up. suggesting that. I just got you out. No. Now I'm going to get you out. No, I'm Next. not that. I'm not that yeah. good. You're not going that good. No, no, no. There was a time you were going that good. No, that's Nolan Ryan. Good, punching everybody out. Gas Masterson. Gas. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm getting it. You get it. <laughs> Two down here in the seventh. Ellsbury chops it down to first foul. I'll tell you what, Jeter gave a real tough at bat to get an out, and then you see Ellsbury giving him a tough go here. I mean, Workman has, I'm telling you, he has worked hard tonight. You can see why, you know, Farrell likes him. He, I mean, he's tough. This kid is tough. Doesn't give in. The ground foul again. You think back to the postseason last year, the World Series coming out of the bullpen for the Red Sox in the World Series and doing it well. Right, what did he pitch? Eight innings that in postseason? I mean, for a Very kid. effectively. Yeah, and then think about it. You know, he was he was starting, he started a game against the A's, didn't he? I forget. Yes. Then he started the night they traded for PB. Isn't that weird? Remember? Against Seattle. And then he had to go to the bullpen. Then he started the season off, right? In the bullpen, and they sent him out, and he was pitching good in one of those numbers games. This is softly lined and caught the shortstop by Drew to end the seventh inning. We're off for the eighth. Four nothing Yankees. Brock Holt lead it off. We come back. Selection of Green Mountain Coffee K Cup packs to keep you running and guarantees to satisfy any fan base. Order by 11:30 a.m. and get free same-day delivery. Who but W.B. Mason? That's the eighth inning back at Yankee Stadium. Red Sox have work to do, trailing four to nothing. 
Yankees out hitting the Red Sox 7 to 3, and it's the top of the Red Sox order. Brock Holt, Dustin McGoy, and David Ortiz coming up to face Adam Warren. Third pitcher of the night for Joe Girardi. 36th appearance of the year, 1 and 4 with a 2.85 earned run average. 39 strikeouts to 11 walks, and opponents hitting at 252 against Warren. Takes over for Dylan Batances. Holt fouls it back to the screen. Batances went an inning and a third. Gave up one hit, a double to Stephen Drew. He didn't allow a run. Walked to batter and struck out two. Brock Holt has walked, doubled, and struck out. On the ground, foul, 0 and 2. Lace ticket, the official Red Sox ticket partner, has the best seats at the lowest prices to all the games at Fenway. All the 200% guarantee. Right now, Ace Ticket has special savings on all Red Sox games. Treat yourself or someone special. Visit Ace Ticket or call 1 800 My Seats. Side for ball one. And Warren has worked out nicely for them setting up. And another guy, Kelly, who was hurt earlier in the year. He was a, one of their setup guys. And then Thornton, lefty specialist out there waiting for Ortiz if he has trouble. Line to center right at Ellsbury, and he stops to make the catch for the first down of the eighth. You look at Warren's outings, and sometimes when, as you know, back when relievers have a couple of bad outings, where that ERA can get out of whack, and of the 13 earned runs that he's allowed this season, 10 have come in just three appearances. Three earned runs against Tampa Bay, three earned runs against Oakland, four earned runs against Baltimore. That's why it's so deceiving when you look at an ERA yeah. from a reliever pitching what 35 innings or whatever. Can you can't take, have a nuclear inning. You right. just can't. It takes you a month oh, to fix totally. it. Pedroia to center field, Ellsbury again, two down. Well, don't miss WB Mason next innings live right after the game. The guys will break down Brandon Workman's start and have John Farrell's post game comments. Can't go wrong when you buy right at WB Mason. The loudest boos can always be heard here at Yankee Stadium when David Ortiz is introduced. Well, he has absolutely worn them out. I mean, you talk about Minnesota on it just a. He didn't play Minnesota very much. So you talk about he has a career against the Yankees. You look at some of the numbers that he's put up against the Yankees. Incredible. Can get it up there pretty good too. Big Poppy's had some swing and misses, some fastballs tonight. Fouls it off, down one and two. Red Sox playing their 80th game of the year tonight. David 72nd as the Red Sox DH. Oh. And he strikes out. Warren really pulled him. 1 2 3 8 for Warren. A 4 0 Yankees lead.
Madison is brought to you in part by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Mazda dealers of New England. Sullivan Tire and Auto Repair. Your New England Ford dealers. KM Natural Frank Casing celebrates something. The new Scion TC. Suffolk University. And by Southwest Airlines. Aerial coverage provided by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Bottom of the eighth inning back at Yankee Stadium. New York on top, four to nothing. Mark Teixeira, Carlos Beltran, and Brian McCann to face the new Red Sox pitcher, Craig Breslow, into the game. 27th appearance, 2-2 two two with a 3.86 earned run average. More walks than strikeouts. Not a good thing. 277 opponent batting average. And Mark Teixeira leading it off. Turns around to bat from the right side now against the lefty Breslow. Breslow's been fighting that same thing. A couple of nuclear innings earlier in the year. On the ground, foul. Your thoughts on Brandon Workman's outing tonight? I thought he was tough. I mean, you know, we we thought that he was a little rusty, right, at the start. He made some big pitches to get out of that bases loaded jam. Next thing you know, two outs to the next inning, back to back home runs, two swings of the bat, cost him. But I think he battled to get you into the eighth inning. I mean, he hasn't been out there for a long time. I think he feels good about it. I think they feel good about his outing. To right center field is going to get in for a hit. Over is Bradley Jr. to share it, pulls it up with a single to begin things here in the bottom of the eighth inning. I mean, I think he's in the rotation. We've got some other problems going forward about what's going to happen. I think the biggest one is, is PV. I mean, everybody's going to go into the next start with PV. Is it a hit or miss? If he pitches poorly, what do you do? I mean, if I'm Ruby De La Rosa, I want the ball, right? I mean, he was a 24-year-old kid. He showed he's got it, right? Let's see what he's got. I mean, I, it's hard to not have him in the rotation, let alone, you know, talk about Dubron. That's another story. But De La Rosa is the guy that lights it up. I mean, he looks impressive, does he not? I mean, he looks oh, like no he's ready. And they're going to have a hard time figuring this out. The easy thing is to, you know, take PV out of the rotation. Simple as that, right? Put him in the bullpen. Try to make a move. Try to make a deal. I'm sure they're always looking to do something. Uh, a bigger question, perhaps, than all the oh, pitching you have is what are the Red Sox going to do about their offense? Oh, I mean, that to me is a bigger story. issue. I totally. mean, that's a. Uh, the problem is having too many good starting pitching. That's that's a problem. It's a good problem to have. Yeah, it is. The bad right. problem to have is when you can't score runs. Right. So how do you turn that starting pitching into offense? And more bad news tonight in the, the well, Middlebrooks and Shane Victorino. Both have had the clock stopped on their rehabs for different reasons. Shane Victorino's back has a little bit of a lower back problem now, which is a different injury from what he had before. So that comes to a halt. And Will Middlebrooks, some swelling where he fractured his finger so so both guys on the shelf right now so you have an excess of starting pitching I mean you'd think that there's there's the clubs out there that need starting pitching look at the Yankees nice. Brock Holt will get it done what don't worry about it Brock Holt's around oh, what new I mean, this kid look at look how far he went to catch this ball this is in center field this ball ends up in center field Bradley can't get there. You see him coming in. Look at him all the way from right field diving. Once again, just another great play by a kid that just has been doing it all. Absolutely everything this year. One out, one on. And Brian McCann, the batter. Do you think he's surprising himself a little bit? I mean, <laughs> Bryce, he doesn't appear to be. No, you he know, looks like to him no he is deal. very confident. Yeah, very. But he's got reason to be. Yes. He made a great play to end the game in Seattle. Yes, if he you did. think about it. Yes, he did with it Koji covering. Doesn't seem like much, but what yeah. if he makes a bad toss to Koji? It's not like he's been a first baseman all that long in I his life. Say, <laughs> why, are, why is he playing first base? Finally got him. It, it has never cost him in every position he's played. He has he made spectacular plays in some of them. 
2 0 pitch popped up foul and out of play. Red Sox here at the new Yankee Stadium. They are 25 and 25. This team is always very tight and it is even. Opened in 2009. New Yankee Stadium. It's amazing. They won it in 2009. First, First year they were here. Yep. To right field, struck well. Holt going back, he'll watch this go up into that second deck. Brian McCann hits his ninth home run of the year, and the Yankees jump out to a 6 0 lead. Third home run of the night for New York. The Yankees are having fun against the Red Sox this year so far. Tonight, three home runs. He's swinging the bat better against left handed pitching than he is right handed. The fastball down middle, and he golfs this thing out of here. Second tank, way back, number nine on the year. Second home run Breslow has allowed this season as Brian Roberts takes ball one. Something about landing in the second deck that just bothers you. Right. Does it? Yeah, kind of. More than <laughs> yeah. more than a regular home run just over the fence. I don't need a second deck. That, it bothers you. That's because they dropped the upper decker sleeve. That's what I. You know what I mean? I don't like that <laughs> upper decker. Right. That's where they get. That I, I didn't know that. Yeah. You were known as that at one I point. I wasn't known as that. Somebody, okay. Somebody dropped it on me. That bothered me. Ooh, upper so decker sleeve. So how can they call you that? If there's no upper deck. <laughs> You don't want to be tagged with a home run name. No. Because there's no upper deck in Fenway, really. I mean, really, you can't reach the upper deck. Right. Right? You hit it onto the mass pike. <laughs> That's good. <yeah. laughs> but you just don't know how far it went. It's just gone over yeah. everything. It's a short. Drew's got it. And Roberts is retired. Two down here in the eighth. Dennis Mass Pike Eckersley. Whoa. <laughs> you wouldn't want that. Pike man. <laughs> How about from the blimp? Oh, Way up in there. Ninth of the year for McCann. He's given the Yankees a 6 0 lead. There for strike one. Yankees have double barreled action out there. Matt Thornton and David Huff warming up as bullpen. Coach out there, Gary Tuck, former Red Sox bullpen coach and catching instructor. They're kind of happy they don't have to go with Robertson tonight. Save him for the night off of the series. <laughs> Swing and a miss for each hero. But you think about the Yankees. Look at they, they're in desperate need. Of starting pitching, right? I mean, they've got really two starters, Kuroda and Tanaka. That's it. And they're trying to make do with everything else. Obviously, they need they would they need a starting pitcher. Not that not not like David Price or something, but they could use a veteran starting pitcher that hasn't doesn't have to be lights out. I mean, Difficult situation the Red Sox are in. This offense has just been so bad. It's something that we, we haven't seen in a long time. It's foreign to the Red Sox fans, to us, everybody. Breslow to first base for the out that ends the inning. A two run home run for Brian McCann has the Yankees on top, six to nothing.
two pretty good catches out of right field tonight for the Red Sox. How about this? Time in the leap and making the catch at the wall. That was to Rob Ryan Roberts, and then later on comes out of nowhere from right field to make the catch. Uh, Carlos Beltran. Two totally different types of catches. Steals a home run, steals a base hit center field. The guy has been absolutely amazing. Yankees tacking on two more in the bottom of the eighth inning and a six nothing lead into the ninth. Mike Napoli leads it off against former Red Sox left hander. Now Thornton's 33rd appearance 0 and 1 with a 2.87 earned run average. 12 strikeouts five walks and a 1 0. Thornton made 20 appearances with the Red Sox last season. 3.52 earned run average. Left off the playoff roster last year for the Red Sox at the end. It was amazing. The Yankees just scooped him up in the offseason. A lot of good years with the White Sox. Getting up there now in age. Doesn't have the kind of voice. See, 96. Didn't have that with the Red Sox. No. Payoff pitch now. Napoli strikes out for the third time tonight. One down in the ninth. This looks like a, I mean, to me, this swing and miss by Napoli, not to pick him out of the lineup, but uh, it's 3 0 count. Comes all the way back, punches him out. This looks like a tired group tonight, to say the least. One down for Daniel Nava. Pinch hit for Johnny Gomes in the sixth inning and grounded out. Takes strike one. It's almost a good thing tomorrow night is a night game. Day game would be crushing. This team needs to regroup. Night game Saturday and Sunday. Fox tomorrow night, ESPN on Sunday. We're back with you Monday from Fenway Park against the Chicago Cubs. Tanaka tomorrow. Yes. Whoa. Not getting easy here. 11 and 2, his record. Things will be tough tomorrow. Runs will be tough to come by, you'd think. Well, Lester's had a lot of success over the years here in, in Yankee Stadium. He needs a big one tomorrow. Red Sox would fall to two and six on this road trip. Lost three out of four to the Oakland A's, two out of three to the Seattle Mariners. The West Coast portion. Two two pitch. Just missed. Ninety seven from Thornton. Wow. It's kind of velocity that we saw when he was a member of the White Sox. On the ground to short, picked on the backhand by Jeter. Plants and throws in time to get Nava two down. Nicely done by Jeter on the backhand there. That ball's hit pretty hard. Because he's got enough time, loads up. He's got enough of his arm left to make that play. Two outs in the ninth inning, and here's AJ Perzinski. 0 for 3 night. He's flying to right, flying to short, flying to right again. Strike one. 
you know the pitcher of record for the Yankees five and two thirds no runs tonight their starter. Going to Tansis went an inning the third shutout pitching. Here's a chopper softly second base Roberts to first the Yankees shut out the Red Sox in game one of the series. Not the way the Red Sox wanted to start this series tonight as Boston is down six to nothing in game one. The step side come back more from Yankee Stadium right after this.